This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast. It's almost so. What you gonna do when they shut it all down? How you gonna move? How you gonna eat when it ain't no food? When the lights go out, that'll be your doom. How you gonna see when it ain't no peace? Military outside walking in your streets. My advice to you is be try to get out of the city. Because pretty soon you know they come into your hood with that vaccine. And if you get it, I can't imagine what's gonna happen. You might turn into a zombie and they start attacking. Hey, if you come after me, Lord, it's gonna be a tragedy. I'm sorry. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be The world awaits to receive you. Bitch, I'm trying to cut out the curse, curse words, y'all. I'm trying to come in without curse words. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Welcome to Uncensored Enlightenment Talk. And you're here with your host, Grace Levi. Yes, yes, yes. I'm having a kindness is cool day. Yes, we have a hat day today. Um, I know I look cute, don't I? I still look cute with the hat. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing good today. Obviously, you see me. I came in hot and heavy. When I play that music, that means the content that I share will be triggering, okay? All right, all right. We are back. Yes, I had to hit you with something a little bit deep. If y'all listen to the words, I hope y'all listen to the words because we're going to have to unite people. It's going to be some shit. Now, let's get into Miss Fanny Willis. Fanny Willis, let's get into the latest update. Next steps of Miss Fanny Willis disqualification saga. We already know we're waiting for the judge to make his decision. But I have, oh, shoot. But I got something good up my sleeve for y'all. Y'all know I always come with something from the left. Something that the mainstream is not really paying attention to. But something that I have found. So before we get there... It's, it's just like a, I told you so, because I said that Miss Fannie Willis remind me of somebody's allegedly current vice president. And I'm just going to leave it like that. OK, I said that I said it seemed like Miss Fannie Willis was moving in the same manner of our particular vice president, allegedly. But I'm going to let you listen to this right now. OK, this was you by Channel 11 News. Let's go. The judge overseeing the Fulton County election interference case has some major decisions before him as he's weighing whether or not District Attorney Fonnie Willis and Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade should be disqualified from the case against former President Trump and others accused of interfering with the 2020 election. Now, attorneys have argued the two are unable to impartially prosecute the case after engaging in a romantic relationship and allegedly financially benefiting from it. Investigative reporter Zach Merchant has been tracking this case from the start and is here now with what we need to know as we head into next week. You're right. It has been a complicated controversy. It has been a controversy with sky high stakes. And we've had some new developments popping up all week. So right now we want to take a minute to break down the three biggest issues to watch out for in the coming days. First, <laughs> even though closing arguments happened last week, the defense team is now asking Judge Scott McAfee to allow for more evidence and more testimony to be submitted. In multiple filings this week, defense attorneys said they have two new witnesses, both lawyers themselves, who say they were told Willis and Wade began their romantic relationship in 2019 before Willis appointed Wade as a special prosecutor. Willis and Wade, for their part, have both testified that relationship did not start until 2022 after Wade took the job. Second, the state has asked, perhaps unsurprisingly, has asked the judge to keep those witnesses out of the record. In a filing earlier this week, D.A. Willis said the record is already closed and suggested the defense effort was an attempt to try the case in the public eye and to embarrass the district attorney. Third, the judge now has some decisions to make, specifically two of them. He'll need to decide whether to let this new testimony in or not. He will also need to make a final ruling on the overall disqualification question. Now, we want to be really clear here. We do not know 
an exact timeline for those decisions. But at closing arguments last week, specifically last Friday, Judge McAfee said he hoped to have answers within two weeks. A week has already passed. So don't be surprised to see some rulings in the coming days. All right. So, Zach, this has taken a long time. Some people might say uh, this controversy started back on January 8th uh, with a disqualification motion filed by one of the defense attorneys. So we've got a lot going with this. Uh, how long might this take? And some might ask, why is it taking so long? Yeah, it has been two full months exactly to the date, actually, today. And it's a question we have gotten a lot as well. Today, we took that question to Bob Rubin. He's a long-term Atlanta defense attorney who is not actively involved in this case. He said that Judge McAfee actually is moving the case along at a brisk pace by legal standards. But he also stressed that in a complicated controversy like this one, speed actually is not the top priority. All right, but they want to do warp speed on the vaccination, but I'm going to shut up. Um, now, <laughs> y'all know I had to just throw a little jab. Warp speed, huh? Y'all heard that little in where you heard specifically Trump say, we're going to do warp speed. We got military. I just wanted to highlight that, okay? Because we're going to do a little special on Trump and his damn vaccines and his role in it. But beside that, let's get back to, because you know I just went to the side. Let's talk about Miss um, Fannie Willis. Now, this particularly two things that stands out in these particular hearings now. Um, the judge. Why did he need two weeks? Why do you need two weeks for I never heard of anything taking this long to make a judgment, but correct me if I'm wrong. That opens up bias. He's going to watch things. And I heard allegedly he has a daggone interview to do before he makes a decision. This is an escapade. I believe this is a distraction to us people. Um, they keep soap operas going on around us is whatever you're interested in. But I will highlight this particularly because um, people, People, when you put yourself in a situation and you think that you're bigger than what you is, they're going to come down and smack you down because I figured that was going to happen, Miss Fannie Willis. She must have did something very crooked in the background to make them come after her or she was already a target behind this Trump thing because they, you can see that it was more than one black woman prosecutor who sent her team after Trump. Yeah, this is all controversy and BS. But I've been knew that Miss Fannie Willis was going to be the fall guy. Okay, not only because of the particular situation of you know black women trying to take Trump down, but she's crooked allegedly. You know the streets of Atlanta talk about it. I'm still waiting to hear the validation of some of the things that I heard outside in the streets about her connection to gangs. But I will take a whole glass of shut up on that note. But I keep on hitting that when we do talk about Miss Fannie Willis, um, as well as her highlighting that the prosecutor here is trying to embarrass us, embarrass her. You embarrass yourself, Miss Fannie. OK, you thinking that you're untouchable. You sleeping with a married man. OK, that very distasteful on top of you being cocky and arrogant with the shit. Now, let's keep it moving because there's a little bit more. I think that there may have been some terroristic threats of you or subliminal threats because that gentleman, which was a lawyer, which was um, Nathan Wade's friend, Nathan Wade lawyer, um, said specifically that he was told to say shut keep his mouth shut about anything that he heard. Um, when you listen to the um, testimony that the lawyer had did that's working for the state going against Miss Fannie Willis, she specifically said that this off this gentleman right here, this gentleman right here, he was the one that gave her all the information. She was sharing his particular text. He seemed like he was down for the cause to get Mr. Nathan Wade and Fannie Willis exposed, but he did not want to be exposed himself. Shortly after the fouling was made, allegedly, um, these two individuals started to contact him, not particularly Fannie, but it was one individual that he didn't hear from a long time. And then it was someone else asking, did he actually um, have anything to do with um, the foulings? And was he 
the mold. Now, let's listen to this New York Times post, Fanny Willis warned Nathan Wade lawyer to stay quiet after a fair court filing. Let's go. These people are crazy. New witness says Fanny Willis warned Wade lawyer to stay quiet. Yeah. A new court filing claims Fannie Willis warned Nathan Wade ex-lawyer partner Charis Bradley to stay quiet about their love affair. As the Fulton County DA battles to keep her posts overseeing the Donald Trump election interference case in... Court papers claim a new witness could testify that she overheard Willis tell Bradley on September 2023 phone call. That's right. They are coming after us. You don't need to talk to them about anything about us. In text to another lawyer, Bradley wrote that Willis and Wade absolutely got together before she hired him special prosecutor. Ways admit that the personal relationship with Wade, Willis admit that the personal relationship with Wade developed, but claimed it happened after the appointing him. Now, what I want you guys to highlight is this particular man. Um, he said that his relationship. There's two reasons that I heard of. One, he has sexual assault allegations against him that he settled. Okay, they didn't get into detail, but that's his dirt. Secondly, he said that he stopped representing Mr. Nathan Wade on his marriage case because of his ethics. He didn't like the way things were going. And what I will remember that the lawyer who was the lawyer for his wife, Mr. Wade's wife, was saying consistently that the Fallons was being delayed, delayed. He, the way he was answering was um, more than going around the subject, but literally lies that you saw during the testimony. So this gentleman literally, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be in his situation, okay? Because Mr. Wade was one of his close friends and partners. Also, there's some question about the structure of their business. Um, there were three different lawyers in this particular law office. They had three different LLCs plus another LLC. The only thing I would, that was conjoined. What I will say is because the business practices are so obscure and loosey-goosey in Georgia that they were able to um, I'm not gonna say launder money, but be able to um, distribute money in a manner that taxes may have been different. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So that was one of the things that the actual prosecutor was talking about. The setup of their law firm was a little bit crooked too. So that may open up a can of worms. This was something maybe I didn't pay attention to, but there's a two more factors that he possibly, she possibly, possibly some witness tampering. I say terroristic threats, but no, actually witness tampering, okay, by her telling him that if she can prove it, and it's going to make things even worse, okay? Now, this is what I will say. Even after what I've just told you, this is where you know we got crookedness inside our system. Oh, yeah. Y'all like that. Y'all like how I started singing? That came out beautifully. Beautiful, fully. Don't feel about it. Came out amazingly. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, yeah, that's how Trump talked. Magnificently. Okay, Fulton County Ethic Board drops Fannie Willis' complaint from hearing. Oh, that's not a surprise, okay? Y'all know, y'all know last year, y'all know me. I had, yes, I have reported a judge to the Ethic Committee, literally for trying to bully me through the whole proceeding he wouldn't even let me really talk and represent myself okay it was just terrible but because i couldn't afford the transcript which was three hundred dollars um i couldn't appeal it but i said hey i'm gonna you know bring this up to the board to see can they look at it to see his behavior because it was unethical he's supposed to be non-biased and he's biased he's saying my prosecutor my this so 
I know I had to tell you a little bit of my story, but this was a live story that has something to do with the ethical board complaint against a, a judge in Georgia. And they, they said, we, we, we find nothing wrong. We're not going to investigate. And so this right here is not surprising to Grace Levi. The Fulton County, we already know what goes on in Fulton County. I was actually talking about Henry County, but hey, this is a good old boy system out here. That's why we had stories like um, Kendrick Johnson. Okay, never forget the young boy who allegedly jumped into a mat and the boys who was involved was the son of FBI agents. But, you know, I just throw that up there because it's just so much so amazing. And if, you, if somebody from Georgia hear me talking about Georgia, they're like, well, if you don't like Georgia, Georgia, get out. Shit, I'm trying. Don't worry. Get in the fuck out. Because I'm not about to deal with this crookedness. A Fulton County ethic watchdog slanted to her complaint against District County Fannie Willis on Tuesday will no longer do so, according to an updated meeting agenda. The Fulton County Board of Ethics was expected to hear two complaints against Willis after her romance with the special prosecutor on the election interference case involving former President Donald Trump, raising concerns of the conflict of interest. The board determined it does not have jurisdiction over Willis, who is a state constitutional officer in her role. Whatever. Whatever. The Hill requests comments from the Board of Ethics uh, Secretary and the Clerk of Fulton County Board of Commissioners. This is why there is a bill now that's trying to be passed that they can actually um, create a Board of Ethics for prosecutors. Uh-huh. Yeah. How about that? So this ethical board said that they cannot or have no jurisdiction over Willis. Her The Hill requests comments from the Board of Ethics Secretary and the Clerk of Fulton County Board. Fulton resident Steve Carmar filed one of the complaints, citing Willis' relationship with Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade and questioned whether she is improperly benefiting from hiring him. The external resources and financial costs for the court and the district attorney office, both paid by Fulton County taxpayer like me, are to deal with the improper relationship, Kimmer wrote in the February 14th complaint. And other complaints was filed by in an inter internet-based talk show host Gregory Mantel, who claimed in a, a Substack post that Willis has violated at least six sections and even more subsections of the Fulton County Ethic Court Code. Let's go. All right, but nothing's happening. The Ethic Board Inquiry um, was cheered on by the national leaders, such as Rep. Margie Teller Green, who posted on the social media last month that she was looking forward to the hearing. The Republican-led state Senate committee also probed Willis' relationship with Wade this week over allegation the district attorney misused taxpayer funds. That's what you saw. We shot live, okay? On Wednesday, the Georgia State Senate Committee on the investigation question, Ashley merchant, a defense attorney representing the 22 Trump campaign operative, Michael Roman. Merchant first brought the romance to life. We talked, we know that January court filing. She detailed her investigation into the prosecutors Wednesday, revealing few new details, but further trusting, um, trusting the relationship into thrusting the relationship into the spotlight. Now the oversight hearing do renew attention to the district attorney relationship as the judge oversee the 22 election interference using ways rather the disqualification of Willis and her office from the historical prosecution. I just want to figure out why the ethical committee didn't go. They said they didn't have no jurisdiction. Right. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Just a wild horse out there acting wow. But hopefully she has her day because I know she's a crooked joke. Now, this is the last part of this, okay? Fannie Willis, secret meeting with Kamala Harris exposed by top attorney. Now, I can't get a full I told you so, but I'm going to say something ain't right. Kamala Harris is going to be the president, and then they're going to have... Now, shut up, y'all. Yo, you're going to black white men going to have a motherfucking fit. If this happened, she, I'm going to have a fit if it happened. You got both, both. I don't know. These people crazy. They're going to have Fannie Willis as the vice president and the president is going to be Kamala mm -hmm. Harris. Here we go. 
I'm trolling. Don't kill me. I'm trolling, okay? Listen, let's get it. But I'm going to say I have a half a I told you so because I knew these two people was connected. They act similar. Like little monsters that's trying to lock everybody up no matter what crookedness they have to do. No matter what they will get the person they want, okay? The very same. So the re a recent testimony in Georgia Senate hearing investigate possible misconduct by uh, we get that. No, let's get to the A's. This is Fox News. We read that. We know what it was. Back and forth. That was really interesting, actually. We got to see how the original text messages between the divorce attorney for Nathan Wade and also his uh, former law business partner um, was texting with this attorney. <clears throat> to go anywhere near this if their goal is to make sure that it is an objective review of potential criminal activity Wait, of this seven is less text than messages than between the divorce attorney for Nathan Wade and also his uh, former law business partner um, was texting with this attorney for Trump co-defendant Ashley Merchant. And so now that we get to see when they were opened, what dates they were sent, I mean, it's all out there and easy to understand. Senior correspondent Jonathan Sari is at the Georgia State Capitol in Atlanta. He's been watching, as we have been, uh, and monitoring since the hearing began. Jonathan, what can you tell us that specifically stands out at this point to you? Yeah, well, the Senate committee hearing is learning more details about what defense attorney Ashley Merchant says she was able to learn about the romantic relationship between District Attorney Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade, her special prosecutor in the Georgia election interference case. Let's listen to some highlights. No, we're not. He said that they met at a judicial conference. Coordinating with the Biden. Next, I want to make sure I have my facts straight. What was the deal with the meeting at the White House? Did you say the Vice President Kamala Harris? Mm. Well, let's go back a little bit. Uh, said that several. The hell going on? Harris? Let's go back a little bit. And I just want to get this straight because I've got a former U.S. attorney coming up next. I want to make sure I have my facts straight. What was the deal with the meeting at the White House? Did you say the Vice President Kamala Harris? Mm. Uh, said that several people were meeting at the White House. Of course, the nature of that meeting was not expressed. It could have been some uh, democratic event or a social but event. Who was in but it? the implication that they're trying to get at was that allegedly there may have been some coordination with this case. Uh, but uh, they don't have any hard evidence of that at this point because the receipts, and this mm -hmm. is something that Ashley Merchant pointed out, that Nathan Wade submitted are very vague. They just uh, mentioned that he met with White House counsel or met with White House, but doesn't go into any detail as to what the meetings were. Okay. Oh, we're going to stop right there. OK, we, we're going to stop right there. So obviously there's something going on in the backdrop. We know who we have in the actual position of president and vice president. And now we see that maybe some people have been meeting in the background getting case information because Mr. Nathan Wade ain't got no damn common sense. OK, he put on his bills that he went to the wow. To the Would you like to learn a brand new and innovative way to invest your extra money that has a low barrier to entry and low competition? What if I told you that it is a guaranteed method to get up to 18 to 20% return on your investment? Tax lien and deed purchasing is the only way to get into the real estate market through the back door no credit and no loans needed. This method isn't commonly taught and therefore the competition is very low for now. Put together a 14 hour info packed course which will teach you everything you'll need to know to get started. Learn at your own pace, step by step, guided video and aids to start you on the TLC deed investment process. The course offers many learning tools for new investors, helping ensure you safely invest in tax liens and deeds. Contact us today and join the buyback team.